I needed a telehandler in order to build the ultimate man cave, but said telehandler I can't afford unless I picked one up that had a blown engine. That's what I did. With the block and the head all stripped down and looking like a rusty mess, I hauled them to the machine shop. They gave them a bath, cleaned them up, decked them, put in new sleeves, and I got them back looking like this. So let's get started. Ryan's Mobile One. So we've got a block, a head, a bunch of loosely organized parts sitting on the floor, a gasket set, the rest of an engine rebuild kit, and an empty telehandler to put it in. It's supposed to be in there. Yeah. Oh. What That's do you no think? Engine. That's a small opening for getting the engine in and out, isn't it? You'll find it goes in easier. Harbor Freight one shining. Bam. You're able to get these amazing readings by crushing the plastic in between the bearings and the crankshaft. Did you identify where that oval is? Whereas there's not one here. We are there. All right, oil pickup time. A valve cover at my feet, because I think I'm doing that. Wow, son of a motherless goat. That is heavy. That head is so heavy. <laughs> Have I, have I mentioned the heaviness going on right now? So the oil pump, there's nothing wrong with the oil pump other than this wasn't tightened and the bolt on this wasn't tightened. So we're just going to take that we're going to slide that on. It's a very precise machine fit. And we're going to take our bracket for the back side. This is kind of like the Chevy 3.5 or 5.3 liters in that it's just snapped. These go together like that and rotate around. So this goes on the back side. The tail goes to the, so you've got these four, and then the other three go up front here. These are all just half inch. There we go. And getting the first one is a little bit tricky. And then the second one, not too bad. Third one, I haven't even done it, but I know how this game goes. It's easy. Goes right in. Put these in. What I like to do, anything with, it's a pipe system or whatever, like exhaust, you start at the head and then you work your way back and you just get all your bolts started first. And that way you don't have anything crooked or being weird on you. I send all these home. And we're going to go back and torque them a little bit and then we'll torque wrench them afterward. So that is tighter than it was before. <laughs> That's way tighter than it was. It's no deal. And this is properly tightened. <laughs> I'm just hoping there's not some stupid crazy thing that I don't know about where this has to be loose. I just shocked that that was as loose. That was clearly not done on the last rebuild. Somebody skipped it. They were in a hurry. <laughs> This goes on for days. This is scary. You know what I mean? So this was secure and this was secure. Then I did this. I'm going to check these two as well. That's a good idea to use a torque wrench. I trust this better than I trust my torque wrench. Maybe that's wrong, but I have better results. That's what counts. There we go. That's more loose. That's kind of good for them to be loose. You know, coming on and off, you'd want to loosen these before pulling the rest of this off so that it can move freely and not get bent and not line up on assembly. You tighten it and then it's just like done. You know what I mean? You can feel your washers there. You can feel it just bind down. And you can mesh this up and you can move this gear. So no matter what that does, you'll still be able to get that in there. Perfect. Also, there we go. We're good. I really like everything going on here. Beautiful. So let's uh, go to the back and we'll put in that spacer. We can do that now, right? I know this is a little cumbersome for some, but to the guy that has a sailboat that's like stuck in the islands of somewhere, whether it's the Polynesian islands or whatnot, and he's got to get his engine done, 
and he's a vlogger and he's like oh crap dude how am I gonna do this I'm not an engine rebuilder or something this one's for you buddy he's got to seal up a, basically a line a barrier across this is all you got to do and then the gaskets for this one will be separate and then for this one the oil pan and then this one's the rear main seal thing as far as getting parts you can get parts for these sent to you just about anywhere <laughs> Oh, the joys of filming at home. They're going to pee. I know everything. I can hear every little detail. So hopefully the camera can't. Take our rubber plugs. I'll drop them in there. And these actually expand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put them in a corner of one side. And then I'm going to use gasket material on the other side. Yeah, I don't know how that works. I can hear everything they're saying, but they can't hear well enough to know I'm filming. This is like really precise fit. I think those plugs take care of everything as far as the seal goes between here and here. So you take these, roll them in your fingers, get a little gasket material on it, shove it in the hole. And it should stick up just a little bit. When you put the oil pan on, it's going to flatten that out. Make sure you've got holes facing to the back, holes facing up. These are for your oil pan, these are for your rear main seal holder bracket thingy. Send that. That wasn't lined up. You see that move? Gotta make sure that's flush or your screw's not gonna go in. But with the sealant that I'm using, that Permatex Right Stuff Gasket Maker, not a problem. Kind of works as a lubricant until it dries. Snug these down. Just take all the wiggle out of them. Now I'm just gonna wipe this back and forth across the gap with a clean rag. And then that'll fill that in, what little there is. So, can we put the oil pan on now? Yes. Are we going to? No. We've got gasket maker holding these in place. Things will crush in just fine. And just wipe that so that it's not a big chunk of, I want to leak here. A little crack spackle operation, that's all we're doing. We just did this bar. I could do the oil pan now but then the timing cover would be sliding in across the gasket and it's not as good installation in my opinion because the oil pan's a flat surface, I want to put that on the top so next I'm going to do the timing cover, the inner one and then I can do the oil pan if I want This was how to replace a crankshaft seal or timing seal on the front end and back end in the case of a forklift like I'm doing I've got a big nice flathead screwdriver that spans the whole thing and has a metal back I'll leave a link in the description where you can find one of these or you can get yours from your toolbox or from the local tool place. Just knock it down in a couple of places. This bends it and kind of folds it like a taco. It makes it come out a lot easier. We're being careful not to scratch the sides of it. So once you've bottomed out, lift it and you can go from the other side. Get on your taco and just push on the screwdriver, don't push on the timing cover just a screwdriver, and it'll pop it right out without doing any deformation I've got a wood block that's about the same height as the distributor pump assembly so I'm going to stick that across the back of this and that's going to make things a lot easier in fact you can put it right underneath of where your seal's going to go this just keeps things from teeter-tottering it's actually pretty solid, but if I take that away makes it a lot more difficult. So block wood under the face of this. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to wipe out not the not the very end but just this clean back side. We're going to go once with just a clean rag and then we're going to follow it up with some solvent. And we're going to be careful not to remove where our marking is to know how far to go on this thing. Another good idea that you can do is use your micrometer, get it turned on, loosen this, zero it out. You can see that the measurement on there is the same from the one that I did for the rear main seal. But what you can do is before you get in business and then you can clean everything out as much as you like is even before removing it. Do you know your micrometer has a tail? It does. <laughs> so we're just going to use that tail. Make sure that this is clear. And zero it in case something moves. Oh, we got grit. That's why it won't zero. So I'm going to drop that tail until it is just right on the money. And that way I know if I go there, I'll be okay because it was okay before it wasn't leaking. So I'm at 5.85 millimeters. And if you use garbage units, that would be uh, 
0.23 inches. I just fold it wherever the spray is. Use gloves to protect your fingers from the solvent cracking and drying them out. Because that's no fun. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean the surface here. And then wipe it with the dry side. And I'm not going up and down. I'm maintaining altitude so that it doesn't get down into the dirty stuff. The dirty stuff's kind of helpful. I mean, we don't need it anymore because we have this. We could really clean it out. But I like to double and triple check and redundancy and the whole thing's just a lot of tickly fun for me. We're going to take some red thread locker. We're going to do it mostly on the lip side of the seal, not the open cavity spring side, but the lip side. Lip side, spring side. And if you want to take a moment and get a couple of fingers greasy, now would be the time to do it. If something doesn't go perfectly for you, just relax. Calm down, don't get frustrated and you'll have a better go at it. Another thing you can do is clean off your old seal so you don't fill things full of dirt from that. You can put your old seal on top and use your hammer. This can oftentimes work out in your favor pretty good. And if it rocks and moves around, it's going to be harder. It's just the way it is. Lots of ways to skin a cat, and if something's not working, feel free to improvise, freestyle, make it happen, Captain. I think we're about there. So we're just about to the dirty. We've got a little room to go there. We're right on it there, pretty much. I need to go backwards there. This part's all on. This is a little high, a little low. This needs to go some more. See how it wants to rock? I just settle it and then tap from there. Oh, looks good. Now what happens if you're crooked? Somebody should be asking that question. If that one's a little high. I want to get it until I'm at least there. I'm at least touching. A little high in a few places here. And then just address that. So that's all good except for it's a little high right there. So if you're crooked, it doesn't seal well. You've got to be perpendicular to the seal or else it's not going to seal. Can't do its job. Can't do it. Now these things are tr a little bit on the tricky side because it's not like you just go right into a lip. I would, I would like that, but I totally understand why they would do it this way so you can pull it out from the front and service it from the front or do it from the rear where it's clean. Going in from the clean side I guess has its advantages. I have did a three part series on how to tear the engine down or what's involved, what was wrong with it. Be sure to check that out if you want to and uh, we're putting it back together. The good, the bad, the ugly. Bonus footage at the end. So I took off the babysitter, I pushed a button and I put it in off-road mode. When you hold the button down, it says slow to five miles an hour. And then once you do that, then you can uh, take it out and go from there. But what an amazing, amazing little vehicle this is. This Ford Raptor's got everything you could want on it right now. Like right out of the box, right off the floor. You can just take it up in the hills and do this kind of stuff. I mean, this is some soft sand and tight you see how tight this is and I'm not scraping it anywhere like this thing's wide but it turns really well I mean we're in the class of uh, UTVs and stuff and we're just getting it done all of these uh, trees I mean look at this and it just I don't know how by some miracle it just gets around the corners like it's nothing I mean it's wheelbase it's turning radius there's a lot that goes into it but it's getting her done